On my mark, Diana. All hands, brace for impact. Engage. Spiner's with us now, and uh, thank you very much for battling through the crowds. It's a pro hunting protest. Pro hunting. Pro hunting. That's fox hunting. Pro fox hunting. Well, the foxes really need representation, I think. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I think you got that wrong. Because the people who want it, uh, who were demonstrating, want to carry on hunting them. Oh, they do. They Killing want to them. chase them on horses. Oh, yeah. well, then the With foxes dogs. need representation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're right, first do. time. They oh my goodness. Do. Let's um, <laughs> talk about the movie, because you, you co-wrote this, didn't you, as well as appearing in it as data? Well, I, I, I co-wrote the story. Yeah. Uh, the screenplay was written by John Logan, who uh, oh. wrote Gladiator, oh, among yeah. other things. And when, you, when you started writing it, what you, the story you were trying to convey was that um, things are changing w within the family. It, right. Star Trek's moving on, the kind of the crew's breaking up, it starts off with a marriage. Exactly. And transition, and uh, uh, just... Uh, to try to write something something that was more or less a family drama, really, mm -hmm. and uh, different aspects of family have taken place, and also my involvement was particularly so that I could guarantee that I would have a good role to play in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, without giving the ending away, one can say that this is a fundamentally important, uh, pivotal moment for data. Correct. Uh, it really is. It doesn't get bigger than this. No, it know? doesn't. Put it, it, put it that way. Yeah. Um, and yet, going back to the time when you were first offered the part, you said no because at the, at the time the casting producers said that, you'd, that, that they saw Data as bald. And you said, I ain't going to sign a six-year rolling contract and shave my head for six years. Well, that was the thing. Is they did ask me if I would be willing to shave my head. And uh, I thought, well, you know, I wouldn't mind it if it was a feature. But for seven years to have to have, uh, you yeah, know... A slack head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I just didn't think it would be a good idea. And then fortunately they hired Patrick <laughs> and uh, it became a moot point. You were a New York taxi driver at one point, weren't you? I was. Yeah, how long for? Did, did I have you in my cab? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that bloke from England. Oh, oh yes, now yeah. I remember. How long were you a cab driver? Uh, not too long. I did it for about six months, and uh, luckily I got a job in the theatre and was able yeah. to uh, retire. Do you guys have to do what, what London taxi drivers have to do, which is, we call it the knowledge. Uh, they go around on little mopeds yeah. uh, with the A to Z of London, right. and, and they learn every single back route, well, they're supposed to anyway, before they can qualify as a London taxi. Is it the same kind of thing going in New York? No, not exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll take that as a no. You know, uh, <laughs> the way, as I recall, because it was many years ago, uh, in order to get your hack license the, for mm -hmm. taxi cab driving, uh, they gave you a list of 20 locations in New York City yeah. to learn. Yeah. Uh, then they would give you a test in which there were 12 of those locations. Right. You had to get eight of them right. And if you got eight of them right, they gave you That's your That's terrible. Lesson. And I tell you what, I can remember <laughs> when I took my, my test, there was a guy next to me who didn't speak English. Uh, he was Hispanic, and he didn't speak any English. And so they gave him an oral test. Yeah. And I can remember the man saying to him, uh, all right, Radio City Music Hall. Do you know where Radio City Music Hall is? And the guy went, Radio, Radio, Radio. He said, okay, you know where that is. <laughs> All right, Penn Station, you know, Penn State. okay, you got Penn State. So that's who drives Jeez. cabs in New York, basically. Uh, no yeah. wonder uh, uh, New York cab drivers have this reputation of being extremely um, rude. Well, it, yeah, it's because they don't know what you're saying. <laughs> they don't know where you're going. Exactly. So it was a proper yellow cab, was it? Big it was a yellow cab. cab. Great yellow yeah. taxi. Yeah. God, that's part of the whole kind of cultural thing, isn't it? It's oh, wonderful. it was amazing, yeah. yeah. It was how, a terrifying how, job. How why? 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 Because of the traffic or because of the passengers? You know, if you could get through an entire day and escape with your life, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was a lucky day. Yeah. What, yeah. But why? Because of the people in the back of the, of the cab or the guys well, yeah, who Yeah, I would say that, with? no, no, I would say in any given day, if I had uh, 50 people in my cab, 47 of them were legally insane. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, just getting away with life was yeah, yeah. always a blessing. You know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Are you going to get to see the Star Trek exhibition? I am. Uh, I, I spent a little bit of time there today. I didn't actually mm. look around much because I was in a room doing interviews, but uh, we will be there tomorrow night. 
And how do you how do you handle the trekkers? How do you handle the characters who know every single line you've ever spoken and want to quibble about the costume change that didn't happen in Act Three? I mean, you well, know. I mean, you know, I'm grateful to them actually. Uh, mm -hmm. They're the reason I've been gainfully employed for 15 years. Yeah. Because we were talking to uh, William Shatner mm. um, on the show the other day. Yeah, and who's that? <laughs> who's that? No. Uh, but I, I and he's he's eternally good tempered about it. But yeah. I mean, he will never shake off Kirk ever. Right. And do you see yourself spending, you know, the next sort of 20 years of your life going around being to Star Trek conventions, being, being data? I don't think so, but you never know. I mean, I, certainly it, to my dying day, it will be the thing I'm most recognized for, unless I just do something spectacular, sure. which is really doubtful. Uh, but uh, I, I do have the advantage of wearing this really extreme makeup, and yeah. so I, I think I do have the ability to do other jobs, which I've done. Well, we, and we actually have aud audio proof of that. Oh, you do? Because you are a fine singer. Ah, well. uh, we have a little clip from a CD. Old Yellow Old Eyes Yellow is Eyes back. Is back, which is fantastic, which you made a, a short while ago. And this is, this is you singing, and we actually hear Patrick Stewart doing a little bit of a voiceover, too. Exactly. Sure that it's true. What's your back to do? Sunspots. The sunspots, exactly. <laughs> As opposed Inkspot. to the spots. Yeah. Just a bit more. Right? You've got a lovely voice. Thank you. Thank you. Q Patrick. No? Yeah. Be sure it's true <laughs> when you say, I love you, darling. You can impersonate him, because can't you? Oh, not really. No. <laughs> Actually, I play Picard in this movie. <laughs> That's very good. And he plays Data. Exactly. <laughs> I've had 15 years' experience, you know, of yeah, yeah. imitating his voice. And uh, I occasionally call his wife and make plans for the evening, and she shows <laughs> up, and there's no one there. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, good luck with the movie. Um, Thanks it opens so much. here, well, it premieres, obviously, uh, tonight, uh, but it, uh, it opens here in January. Yeah. Exactly. In New Year. In New Year. Hope it has a, as, as big a success as uh, all the others have done. It's lovely to see you. Thanks so Thanks much. Thanks for fighting Great through to the, see you. the hordes to get Thank here tonight. You. We it's appreciate it. Yes. Thank a you pleasure very to much, be Brent. here. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. That's a relief. You couldn't tell I'd had two glasses of wine by the time we got here, could you? <laughs> <laughs> it's getting close to midnight, wasn't it? <laughs> Not that late. Anyway, coming up, we're going to have Patrick Stewart on in January. He's promised to come back. Now, coming up, we have the last in our mini series on. <laughs> I was going to bring that in. If you missed the beginning of the show, hi. Uh, we've been cooking down a la Chatme. That is Captain Kirk's favourite way of cooking his Christmas dinner deep fried turkey. It must be burnt to a crisp. And actually, <laughs> well, it, looks, it, looks, it looks absolutely fine, actually. I thought it was going to come out looking like a piece so of that's, uh, if, fried haddock. If any blokes would barbecue turkey, then they could get on with it, couldn't yeah. they? <laughs> so. Yeah. How long did that take then, in total? It takes about three minutes a pound, um, probably about 40 minutes. Oh, it's delicious. Of course it is. Carved some for mm, the lady. Sorry, how rude of me. But what do you put it yeah, in? Yeah, you are. Do you fry it? You have to have a very big pot. Yeah, a very, very big pot. Okay. It's, um, you need to make sure there's enough, enough room think, to cover the turkey. I think probably what we should um, stress is that it's, it's potentially very dangerous and you should only do it outside. Absolutely. Never do it inside. No, Come absolutely. On. Outro. It's delicious. Oh, you do the outro. I'm enjoying this. All right. At Battle of the Bands tomorrow and Thursday, the boys who won Pop Stars The Rivals with their Christmas single, The Day After That Is The Girls. Big live audience. Thanks for watching. Join us live Thank tomorrow. Bye-bye. See works. you. That works. That really works.